Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Today, we're going to be offering an introduction to the lean rattlesnake hunt uh, with our featured presenter, Mark Preston. Uh, my name is Scott Luton. I serve as managing partner at TalentStream, your host today. Uh, TalentStream has been on a critical mission since 2013 to help organizations find the best technical talent available in the fields of information technology, engineering, and supply chain. As part of our TalentStream Leadership Academy, we're very really pleased to uh, offer uh, Mark Preston and, and uh, his best practices and expertise as a way of delivering great content out into the marketplace. So from a talent stream perspective, one last note, if your organization's looking for new avenues and resources for talent, or if you're looking to save time and streamline your talent acquisition processes, please reach out to me directly. We'd love to have a conversation. Okay, a few ground rules, keeping things simple for our hour long webinar today. Uh, number one, all of our attendees will be on mute to optimize the audio experience, but we do want to make it as interactive as possible. So please do submit your questions, your observations, you name it via the chat toolbar, or you can use the raise your hand button. If you use the raise your hand button, uh, you will need to uh, have a microphone to be able to pose your question or observation uh, verbally. Finally, a PDF of today's presentation and a, recor a recording of the webinar will be sent out to each registrant after today's session. Okay, let, let's uh, I'm share a little background information around our featured presenter today, uh, Mark Preston. Uh, Mark currently serves as president and CEO of Lean Applications. Uh, Mark's been driving change in manufacturing and sales environments for over 25 years, primarily utilizing Lean. During his 11 years with TDK Electronics, he studied Kaizen manufacturing techniques in Japan uh, during his TDK Executive Sensei training. After his time at TDK, Mark invested seven years in a variety of executive roles within Respironics. His time at Respironics included uh, achievements such as leading the, lean supply, uh, leading the lean layout of a new Kennesaw, Georgia facility, the creation of a new structured purchasing organization, and he helped improve the supply base by creating and implementing a 13-week supplier development program. In 2006, Mark became the director of Acuity Business System at Acuity Brands Lighting. He led the deployment of Lean in the Acuity supply chain for 16 plants, five distribution centers, and 14 supplier development programs. During this time, he continued his personal training with Shingojutsu in Japan and was promoted to vice president of supplier development and operations excellence. Currently, Mark is a Lean champion for the Association of Manufacturing Excellence, where he's also on the AME National Board, uh, leading the board's key result area for enterprise excellence. Mark's been a keynote speaker for a variety of organizations, including Apex, CSCMP, Modex, CME, Scope, and Impact Manufacturing. With that said, here's Mark Preston. Uh, good afternoon, good morning. I'm not sure. We're right at the uh, middle of it. So. Uh, it's glad to uh, work with you today. My goal is to give you a couple of great ideas um, that you can quickly implement uh, with whoever uh, has waste, and even in your own home, even in uh, companies. So you'll you'll see a lot of applications that we have as far as uh, how do you go about in an engaging way to help employees and really make it a fun and uh, energetic program. So the first thing I'll ask is competition feeds on our waste. Uh, the goal, the relentless pursuit and elimination of waste. This is not my office, and it's not Scott, so just don't worry. But actually, think about it. You feed on your competition's waste as well. If they can't deliver on time, you can deliver on time. If they can't um, have good quality, you've got good quality. So. It's a matter of who's got the least waste in their processes, who's got the least waste in their organization, who can deliver on time, who can have the best quality, who, who can have the best cost. And um, it really is true that competition feeds on our waste. When you look at waste, the first thing you have to think about is what's value added and what's non value added. You know, what is valuable to the customer? Are they paying? for us to 100% inspect that part 
for years and years, or they're, they're really paying for a good part the first time. So we have to think about what's value added to that customer and what's not value added that we're doing just because we've always done it that way. So one of the nice acronyms that I like to use is downtime. So stop downtime. And the eight wastes are defects, overproduction, wait time, non-utilized people, transportation, inventories, motion, and extra processing. So when I speak, I've done lean in sales, I've done lean in the office, I've done lean in operations, in suppliers, in, with customers. You can do lean at home. You can do a lot of different things. You know, people think of lean in different terms, and I, I want to give you a, a quick definition of lean for me. If you, if you think of L-E-A-N, lean, living, are you living it, engaged, attitude, now is what I think about when I think about lean. Or do we have a lifestyle? Do you go to my car and you can't find anything? Do you go home, do you go home and, and your house is a mess? Are you living it? Are you living a, a life of being organized and saving you time, saving you frustration? Um, are you engaged? Are you working for a paycheck or are you working for a career? That's the question I often ask a lot of people. Are you engaged in what's going on? So it's up to us to be engaged. You can actually tell when you walk through a plant about their attitude. Attitude is such a key driver and a productive operation. So living engaged attitude. First time I went to uh, Shearsville, one of my suppliers, a lot of frowns, a lot of um, disgust was there, and the attitude was not very good at all. Now you go there and there's there's smiles on people's faces. You can actually see the attitude. And of course, in is for now. Now there's no better time than right now uh, to improve your operations, your office environment, your processes in your office, uh, your plant floor. So the rattlesnake hunt became a really fun way to do that, to engage people and to create uh, a culture where everyone has a part of improving. So let's talk about the eight ways. I like to talk about them in two ways. How you would look at them in the office environment, so whether you're working in insurance or you're working in, in an office environment or whether you're working on a plant floor creating a product. I want you to understand the waste in both descriptions. So defects. If you ever walk through a plant, you know uh, the defects that are there because hopefully they're segregated in red bins or they're segregated behind a red fence or there's some kind of labeling that's non-performance. You know, what, what I do see sometimes is a rat, you know, and a rattlesnake is, right, right before I start into this, I want you to know that all the eight ways to rattlesnake. A rattlesnake is something that'll bite you if you see it, bite you if you hear it, if you're around it long enough, it'll bite you. So think about safety issues, think about waste in your processes, think about a cord laying on the floor that you're going to trip over eventually. It's a rattlesnake waiting to bite you. It's also quality issues, the defect situation where defects in a gray bin that are not labeled and defects in a, uh, in a good product in a gray bin that's not labeled. Which one is the customer probably going to get? They're probably going to get the defects because you don't have good segregation around. And what's not performing. So when I walk through a facility, I really look for defects, about how it's segregated. When I think about defects in the office, I think about anything that starts with re. Redo, rewrite, requote. Why are we having to redo everything? It's because it's a defect. It's, uh, can't we try to eliminate having to redo things, rework things, uh, requote. Uh, so think about you're thinking about defects in the office, think about segregation, you think about defects on the floor. Overproduction, processing more than is needed before it's needed. So think about in the office, if my boss asks me for a 20 page report, do you think he really looks at a 20 page report? He probably has value and looks at two or three places in that report. Sit down with them is what I would encourage you so you don't overproduce reports. Can you make a one page dashboard that, that meets all the needs of your 
customer or your boss. And we finish that over production. It'll save you time, it'll save him time, and it'll eliminate a lot of waste. So overproduction in the plants would result in inventory, which is another waste. But why are you producing more than needed? You know, there may be a reason. Can you eliminate some of those reasons and try to produce what's needed and what's needed? Because it'll result in uh, using money that you don't need to use, putting money into inventory. Wait time. Are you waiting for approvals? In the office, are you waiting for someone uh, to finish what they're doing because they have it in their inbox for a very long time? Wait, waiting in the plant. A lot of times, this is my explanation for that. A lot of times, we put our clothes in a washing machine and we start the washing machine. Do we ever stand there at the washing machine and wait for it to finish? I don't think so. We always go do other things, let the washing machine do what it needs to do to come back to the washing machine. Think about how many times in a plant we'll put a part in a machine, or we'll put a, we'll make 500 copies at the copy machine, and we stand there and wait for the copies to finish, or we wait for the machine to finish the part. Now, I've seen in many operations where you have three or four machines synchronized, so one person can run three or four machines without waiting for one operation. So, and we eliminate wait time as a downtime, as one of the eight ways. Non utilized people. People are the key reasons plants exist. And so the experts are the people that do it every day, the people on the floor. Do we put walls up so that we don't get good ideas from those experts? I think so in many cases. I see this a lot. We have to tap into their ideas. We have to show them that they're part of the team. Very intelligent people that work on the floor every day. They know what needs to be done. They know the best ideas. So we have to utilize them. We also have to make sure that you know we're we use their full creative problem solving ability. Transportation. Transportation is moving parts all over the place. There's you know no shorter distance than a straight line or a, a semicircle. But I mean, if you were to uh, track a part from receiving all the way through your plant, would it look like a spaghetti diagram or a mound of spaghetti when you got through all the way to ship? There's one way I found to do this. There's some free apps called uh, HumanaFit Plus, which is an insurance app, as well as a uh, Map My Walk is another free app. And when you start the app, it lays down a line, it tracks how far you walk, and it'll find you anywhere inside a building, outside a building, and everywhere you walk, it'll track and, and show you a line on all that tracking and that transportation. So one of the things we've done is given a phone with that app started to a forklift driver and really see where his pick path is. His pick path may be... Um, Maybe straight, but normally it's going miles and miles to pick what it is in the warehouse. So you can actually see this with Map My Walk or Humanifit Plus. Transportation also in the office. A lot I've been to one uh, office where there was one fax machine that was on one side of the plant. The quote team would walk five times a day to go get their faxes on the fax machine. So how can we relocate that, get another fax machine, or, or make it easier to work together with the team? transportation. Hey, Mark. Inventories. Hey, Mark, this is Scott. I got yeah. a quick, quick question from Mike. Uh, what was the name of the free app you just mentioned that could track uh, the footsteps? Uh, Humana. H-U-M-A-N-A. -A. Humana, like the insurance company, Humana. Humana Fit Plus. As well as um, there's another one called App My Wall. So, yeah, those both work very well. Thank you. Um, inventories. So, inventory waste. I want you to think about if your products going through the plant were gallons of milk or sitting on the shelf with gallons of milk, how bad would your plant smell right now? I always think about that when I see inventory sitting around, maybe you know, not moving. The other way to look at inventory is the Geico money with the two eyes that's sitting on the shelf. 
you've actually spent money on material, you spent money on labor, you spent money on overhead. Now it's sitting there and getting air conditioned, and you just have money sitting on the shelf. If you can reduce that inventory, and we've reduced millions and millions of dollars worth of inventory at uh, Acuity and other places I've worked, that frees up cash flow. With that cash flow, then you can do a lot of other things with that cash flow. The cash is in your pocket, not sitting on the shelf. Motion waste. When I walk through a plant, when you walk through an operation, I want you to look for elbows. How far are people reaching for what they need? Why is it everything right there where they need it? So motion waste. Think about, you know, why is why do I have to walk over here 50 times a day when I can move that location right to where I'm working? So motion waste in the, in the plant. Motion waste in the office. Clicks of the mouse. Think about how many times you have to open different applications or move throughout a, a website to find what you need. What's the value to you? Do you want to go directly to where you need to go? What's that motion that you have to do? You know, the quicker you can get to something, the better. So motion waste. And then lastly is extra processing. Are we putting um, time and effort into something that you know, the customer really doesn't need. What's the value from the perspective of the customer? So a lot of times we really have to look at, you know, what are we doing in extra processing? Or processing with the wrong thing. A lot of times I see people using hammers, like a hammer that would hammer a nail out in the production floor. Well, they aren't making nails. They're making a product. And why are you hammering something? It's because you did, something's wrong with the specification and you're hammering it together. And that's the wrong tool for the job. So it's an instant indicator that there's extra processing involved because we don't have, there's something wrong with that, the parts. Okay, so that gives you a, a good little overview of the downtime. We'll go through some examples of that again, defects. Where were these parts? Are they labeled correctly? Do we have them segregated correctly? Um, making sure that they don't get mixed in with the wrong thing. Overproduction waste. How many do we really need? Can you produce what you need when you need it? Uh, trying to really reduce overproduction. How many pages do you really need in that report, as we talked about? Can we do a one-page overview, uh, what we call the four blocker? And uh, if anybody wants a four blocker template, it has really saved me time with management updates, uh, and I'll be glad to share with you on uh, Four Blocker and other templates that you might think about. Um, you know, we have a pretty extensive library, and uh, we've done a lot of different things. So, but anyway, overproduction, trying to get the least amount produced to meet the customer's need. We talked about waiting, watching the clothes wash, or versus running eight machines with one person so that they're synchronized and there's a good balance of work uh, throughout the operation. You aren't waiting on the next up or down uh, operation to finish. Non-utilized people, it includes creativity, behavior, and skills. To me, this is a rattlesnake nest right here. How many of those labels that you see here were destroyed because we, we weren't, our behavior did not fit um, they were just thrown into this bin versus putting a little roller on the side of the uh, hopper. So think about what's our behavior? How, how do we expect the plant to look? How do we expect the things to look? Transportation and walking waste. Uh, how far do the products travel all the way down the conveyor line? We got rid of a lot of our conveyor lines with Acuity, went to U-shaped cells. It really increased our productivity. It really increased our uh, distance traveled, and a lot of waste was eliminated. But think about the distance traveled from receiving dock all the way through to shipping dock. Thing is, even in the office, are things correctly located? Inventory. Here's the uh, gallons of milk. You know how long? How bad does your facility smell? Um, I didn't go over the office example. The office example of inventory is uh, always, 
in my classes, I have people raise their hand if they have over 100 emails in their inbox. Think of emails as inventory. How many of those emails, if you had less than 100 emails in your inbox, would you be more efficient? Uh, would you be able to find things quicker? If you had it set up with folders based on categories, you could take them out of your inbox and categorize them and everything is there. How many of those emails that you get on a daily basis that you automatically delete? Well, that's wasting a few seconds of your day every time you have to look at them and delete them. So get rid of those kind of things. Try to reduce the inventory in your box for emails. Motion waste. Again, think about elbows. How far do you reach for what you need? Why isn't it right there where you need it? So that's motion waste. Also, the clicks of the mouse in, in the office. Extra processing. Do we really need, you know, what is the right tool for the job? Uh, do we, are we producing more than the customer really values? What do they really value? And how valuable is that that we're doing? And using the right tool for the job. A hammer versus, you know, we don't get nails in this operation, so why are we using a hammer? One of the things that I look for is any tool that's made out of duct tape. You know, you would think, oh, I'm going to, take that off the line because it's not world class. Well, what I see is that people are being creative because we haven't provided the right tool. They've tried to do something so that it makes their job easier. Again, the people on the floor are the experts. They're the ones that do it every day. So praise them for trying something and then try to make that a world class tool for you. And you'll, you'll come out way ahead of them. So, that covers the eight waste and, and several of the rattlesnakes that we look for. The background of the rattlesnake hunt, it really started when I was doing supplier development at OSRAM in, in Monterey, Mexico. And we did 5S and we did audits and it was stale or, and I've used it a lot of times when you're just starting up a lean program to get people engaged. So I'm like, we gotta come up with something that is engaging, fun, competitive, and gets people to really see waste. The first step in lean is learning to see. Learning to see waste, things that are around them. Learning to see how we can improve things. So the first step is educating. Uh, so what I would do would be go in and we do three day rattlesnakes all the time. I've done probably I do 20 a year and then I teach people, companies to do them and then those three days, they learn how to do them, and then they do one rattlesnake hunt per month, and it really starts improving the plan. So this is how a rattlesnake goes. The first, do, the first day, I do about two hours of training, showing people what uh, rattlesnakes look like, from pictures and experience that I've had. And then we divide them up into three teams. The teams can be from three people to five people, depends on the size of the company. And those teams um, are cross-functional. Some, some work in the areas that they would be assigned. So you have three areas and three teams. So each team would have their own area. And you would have some cross-functional people in the office, some people on, uh, in the on the floor. And eventually, over a year, everybody gets to participate in a medicine class. Well, after you divide them up into teams, we do the little train, uh, two hours worth of training. They each get a conference room wall, which will put butcher block paper or some type of paper on. They each, each team gets a camera, and each team gets a uh, uh, bunch of tags, rattlesnake tags. I'll show you what those look like in a second. So the second half of the day on first day is to go out and find as many rattlesnakes as you can in your area and tag those rattlesnakes put half the tag on the rattlesnake, the other half of the tag goes up on the wall next to the picture of the rattlesnake. So on one side of the, of the rattlesnake tag is a picture of the rattlesnake, the other is has got the tag, and then you leave space for the, um, for the after picture. So the first day is all about finding and tagging rattlesnakes. I have averaged, there's it's no doubt you average it at least 100 rattlesnakes per team 
uh, per wall. So there's at least 300 rattlesnakes that have been identified. And I've been in companies that have done lean a long time. I've been in companies that have just started their lean journey. Every, in every case, we found at least 300 rattlesnakes on the first day. So the first day is all about tagging the rattlesnakes. And then after we tag them, we actually, that night, uh, myself and the plant manager or somebody else in the facility uh, would judge those rattlesnakes. So we actually have recognition. Uh, you can see where rattlesnakes were put up on the wall. And after day one, we really spare no expense. I go to the dollar store and get some really high class prizes. It's all for fun. And um, but we have a good time with it. The biggest safety award, who's got the biggest safety rattlesnake, the biggest quality rattlesnake, the biggest 5S rattlesnake, and uh, the most rattlesnakes is usually another award. So based on the teams, you know, we'll, we'll give out awards to each team member. Uh, and so they're actually competing for what they can find, the most rattlesnakes, the biggest safety, the biggest quality, and the biggest 5S. So, that's in day one. Now, day two and three. Day two and three is all about killing the rattlesnakes, which means take the after picture of the problem being fixed. So if you have a cord on the floor and you figure out a different way to route that cord so nobody trips on it, you take the after picture of no cord on the floor and you post that next to the tag so you can actually see which ones you kill. And uh, the goal is to kill 80% in two days by the teams. It's not by the maintenance guy. If you have to have maintenance, then we would actually write a work order and post the work order up there. But it's not killed until that's actually completed by somebody who needs to do it. For instance, if it's an electrical problem. But most of these rattlesnakes can be done by the team. 80% has been the target. Uh, for two days of kill. So the first day is tagging and finding. The next two days is all about killing the rattlesnakes. Hey, Mark. Wanted to, yes. Hey, I uh, got a question uh, from Amanda. Um, what's the most rattlesnakes you've killed during one of these hunts in a single, or the most rattlesnakes you've identified in one of these hunts in a single day? We've identified 346. That was the top one with three teams. And we killed in those we killed 296 of those snakes during that time. Wow! And, and how many folks were involved in that rattlesnake hunt? There was uh, four people per team, so that was 12 people uh, that were dedicated to the rattlesnake. And that was a fairly large plant. And I've done some rattlesnake hunts where there's only 30 people in a plant. And so they can't afford to lose that many people, so they would do two two teams, and each team would have three people on each team. So you can you can uh, ratio it based on you know what you can afford to uh, give up. But the key is this is the way I always see it. If if I always clean my kids' room up, they'll never clean their room up. There's something about um, seeing the waste that you're around all the time and being it you know, fixing those problems. And what I also would say is that they won't come back as easily because you had to fix them. It's the people that created them are the ones that had to, to clean it up. And so it really creates some camaraderie. What I've seen also in the teams is some of these people have never worked with others um, that are on the team. And it's created a bond that they'll see each other now in the plant. And, uh, you know, they, they were on the rattlesnake hunt team. So it, it creates some camaraderie and uh, a ton of things that uh, will help you in your, your facility. Great. Thank you, Mark. I'm um, looking at um, some more rattlesnakes. So why can a sensei take three steps into the factory and say there's no standard work? This is Mr. Newa. He used to be plant manager to Toyota plant. He was one of my senseis. Um, very intelligent man, but, you know, I worked with him for three years and took a ton of notes, and he really helped me see as a sense they would or a teacher would. So if you have a customer, which most of your customers come to your facilities probably, they get an impression of your facility. 
that customer will go to your competition. They'll get an impression of your competition's facilities process. A lot of times, deals go down because of those first impressions from the customer. So I always ask folks, where do you think the customer's first impression of your facility is? And uh, the answer is the parking lot. The first impression of your facility is the parking lot. Are there cigarette butts everywhere in the parking lot? Is the grass cut? Are all the lights working if it's a lighting company? Uh, you, you know, is there leaks? Uh, what does it look like? Does it look like a, a place you want to put your product? So that first impression is the parking lot. And the next first impression is the lobby. Uh, you go in and does it look like a dentist office where you just have gray walls and a couple of pictures hanging? Or can you tell what they produce there with a display? Can you see the machines, pictures of things that they're capable of? Can you see the people that are, do the people get recognized? At that what does that lobby look like? And it can be small things as, they, as well as big things. One of my clients, um, Chick fil A, actually, I love their lobby. Because I went in and it doesn't have to be very expensive. When I checked in uh, to see it before a meeting, there was a, uh, a business card holder there next to the uh, receptionist. And I'm like, I looked at it, and it, in the business card holder was a business card that says, Welcome to Chick fil A. Your free Wi Fi password exists for our guests. And you don't realize how many long it takes sometimes for me to get a, a lot of password uh, in companies and it's usually 3,000 digits long. But there at Chick-fil-A they had a business card holder with business cards that actually had the Chick-fil-A lot of password. Little things like that start adding up to the wow factor. You know, I haven't seen that before. So that first impression again is the lobby. Then you probably go to your conference room. You know, can you see the conference room looks world class? And then going out onto the plant floor, I want you, next time you go, if you're in manufacturing, next time you go to a plant, I want you to stop after you take three steps onto the plant floor. Those three steps are critical because that's the first impression your customers get when they go into your plant. So we often do not stop long enough to look around especially in those first three steps into the plant. So when I first started Respironics, I had my staff meet me in my office. It was right next to the plant floor. And I said, we're going on a, a gimbal walk well, where the work's being done. We're going on a walk together, grab a notebook. So we took three steps into the plant, and I stopped, and I gave them about 50 things that weren't world class. And I turned around, and I went back in my office, and I said, when we get done with those, let me know. Uh, we'll go on another walk. So they came back a couple weeks later, and uh, we walked three steps. It definitely looked much better. Uh, we walked another three steps, and I pointed out 20 or 30 more things, and I turned around. And this continued for about three or four months until we could walk all the way across the plant. The explanation I like to leave you with is can you walk from all the way through the plant and see world class. Do we stop long enough uh, to get to make sure there's no rattlesnakes that might bite us and prevent us from getting customer business? That's a rattlesnake as well. Um, that's culture. Everything in its place. Everything has a place. Closed loop systems. Do we have ownership and accountability? I always look for ownership and accountability. I love to put pictures on things. One thing I'll do is put pictures on lockers. Whose locker is this? Put their picture on it, their employee ID picture. You know, they own this locker. And, you know, if they have a bad tuna fish sandwich for a long time, I know whose locker it is. Today, you know, I may not. The other thing is I'll go to the HR bulletin board, and a lot of times in the HR bulletin board, there's a uh, Thanksgiving poster, and it's July. And why is that? Because everybody owns the bulletin board or nobody owns the bulletin board. If you put the HR manager's picture in the bottom right-hand corner with their name on the bulletin board, it always is updated. There's something about it. My picture's on something. I have pride, and I may, I may, and 
it, we know exactly who to go to if there's something outdated. So ownership is a key uh, to improving uh, improving in the plant. Who owns this? What team owns this 5S area? So it's a key thing. Also measurement, feedback to the cell level as far as their goals and objectives for the day, for the week, for the month. So those are some of the things that a sensei really looks for when you're walking through. One of the quick and easy ways to let everybody in the plant know where you stand is to create a non-negotiable list. I love the term non-negotiable. There's no other definition. It's non-negotiable for us. So do you have a non-negotiable list in your plant? Is it posted? So this is some examples of non-negotiable lists. No long-term handwritten sign. I've seen a sign that is torn off a cardboard box and has trash handwritten on it, put over the trash can. Is that world class? No. So if it's going to be longer than a week, then type it up and laminate it. The second one's no, not, not laminated. If it's not laminated and it's just stuck on a door, it's usually going to curl up, look bad in a couple of weeks, and, uh, get torn. So let's type them up and laminate them. Uh, no unpainted wood or steel. If it looks homemade, it probably is. So let's take the time to make it look world class. Cables are all tied up. No wires on the floor to trip on. Uh, you have all your tools have a designated location, like on the shadow board. This one you may not think of is uh, all flat surfaces. Uh, so try to have no flat surfaces greater than six feet tall. If you have a box that's on a shelf that's six feet up in the air, you have no idea how heavy the box is, so it could cause a safety issue. Think about people's lockers. They'll put a coffee cup up on top of the locker. It'll stay there a couple of weeks, and um, it's because you can you put something on top of the locker. A lot of time, one of the things we've done is actually put a, a lean-to or a roof on the locker so that it's an angled roof, so you can't put anything up there, and that way it prevents people from doing the wrong thing. Labeling, um, correct safety issues immediately, uh, red tag, anything that in this position. We'll talk about red tag in a minute. Aisleways are clearly marked and clear at all times. I don't want to trip over a pallet that's in the aisleway. Um, I'm in one book called The Incredible Payback. From Patricia Moody, and uh, it's about supplier development. My kids make fun of me because my quote in there is, "Cardboard is not a world-class material." And I don't mind using cardboard for packaging or anything like that. So if you're a car gator, don't get mad at me. The thing I'm saying is, don't grab a box from the trash can and write pencils on it and put pencils. In. If you can eliminate cardboard and create, you know, go to the dollar store, get dollar bins, and label those bins, and start creating systems, it starts reducing a lot of dust in your plant. It starts making things look a lot better. Um, limit, uh, all equipment and benches should be clean and painted, color coded consistency. So OSHA has a color coding for the floors. You know, uh, yellow means this, red means this. And so I've used that quite a bit. We can provide that if you need the color coded chart too. But you know what do, what do colors mean, and uh, how can you find things quickly by color code? Everything has a place. So this is a setup cart that we created. Everything's got a place. One thing about this one is actually it's got a uh, picture behind the tool showing what the tool is actually. Instead of just drawing a line around the tool, it actually has a picture of the tool laminated. And it's got the McMaster car number, so if you have to order another one, it's actually right there. Um, the thing that's missing are the doors. What happens if you have doors on cabinets? Everything goes in there. Everything gets to be a mess. You're hiding waste. So the champ AME champions, we went to Raytheon Missile Systems, and it was really great because you know they had a very lean facility. You want your the company that makes missiles to be very lean and organized. And they asked us if we had a suggestion. And my only suggestion is take the doors off all your cabinets in the plant, or make them see through or graded if you have to lock things up. Because if you can't see the waste, it's still there, um, and it can cause you 
it can be a rattlesnake that might bite you in the future. So take the doors off if you can. Five S. Simple, sort, straighten, shine, standardize, sustain. People ask me about the rattlesnake hunt, and I think if you do the rattlesnake hunt for six months and then you start a 5S program, it gets the low hanging fruit of before you start auditing. And a lot of times if you just start auditing with 5S, you get a lot of zeros. It's not that encouraging and motivating. But if you start for six months to a year with a rattlesnake hunt and really get people engaged in it, then you start a 5S program. It really works much better. The other thing I would say is sometimes 5S gets stale after a couple of years of doing it, and a rattlesnake hunt program will also reinvigorate that um, because you've had some time with 5S. Keep tools and supplies handy. One thing I don't like to see is a broom in a plant laying on a half a million dollar piece of equipment. A broom is a tool just like a wrench. So where does it belong? So we've created um, cleaning carts so that it's easy to find what you need. We took the doors off of cabinets, labeled everything, really trying to make things more efficient for people and, and reducing frustration as well. Material presentation, again, eliminate motion. Everything's right there that we need. You can use DVC pipes, you can use whatever. It doesn't cost a lot to, be, to get yourself organized and to improve your labeling. Uh, here's a before and an after, tools all over the place. We actually had a wrench fall into a motor and burn the motor up. The people love this because we put a shadow board right next to where they needed to do the work. They could always find tools they needed and wouldn't have to spend time looking for them. So this would be like a rattlesnake picture of a rattlesnake, and then this would be a picture of the kill and, and, and as, as an example. What would happen if you didn't have lines here on the floor? Probably it would be a mess. You would trip over things. There would be no organization. Everything has a place. Everything's in its place. I mean, there's an extent. I, I don't tape off desks or anything like that. You've got to, you know, don't fool yourself. It's my 11th commandment of lean. Make sure you're uh, doing the things that make sense and, and have common sense about. Again, what do rattlesnakes look like? Cardboard boxes. Would this not be better with a plastic band with labeling, laminated signs, those kind of things? Uh, dirty, dust, ledges. You know, what does the customer see when they walk into your plant? I see a lot of safety issues, and you know that's the biggest thing that we I always look for safety first because I want to protect the people that work there. And you'll see OSHA violations where you have pallets in front of fire extinguishers, you have cords on the floor, and a lot of different things like that you'll find as rattlesnakes. They can also be improvement ideas. I mean, would this not be better if it were painted? or had casters on it so you could roll it to where you needed to work with it. There's a lot of different things you can do uh, to continue to improve those kind of things. This is a funny rattlesnake. This uh, MSDS cabinet sat there for four months and nobody uh, unwrapped it, so they just started putting the chemicals on top of the cabinet. So I come across pictures like this occasionally where, okay, let's just use the cabinet I'll put the chemicals on top of the cap. Um, I can a lot of times when I go to a company, I can tell what kind of coffee they drink because it's either Folgers or Maxwell House because they use all the coffee cans as drip oil, oil leak uh, containers. And okay, let's fix the oil leak. How about it? Instead of just using coffee cans, those kind of things. Do these belong on this transformer? Can they be put in the right place so we can find them when they're needed? Those kind of things. This is like a bunch of rattlesnakes on the floor just waiting for somebody to walk around the machine and trip. Um, the whole time we're doing rattlesnakes, it's, not, it's all about you know showing respect to the people doing the work, making the people, the, the rattlesnake hunters that come into the area 
we also like to encourage them to talk to the people and ask them, what's been bothering you? What can we help you with? We, we're devoting some assets for the company to go fix things that you've been wanting fixed for a very long time. And that way, the next time you have a rattlesnake hunt, usually there's a long list of people volunteering to be on the next rattlesnake hunt. It's not that we want to change your area. We want to improve your area because I know you know what needs to be done and how we can improve that area. Um, before moving any of their things, we need to talk to them, make sure they're part of part of the team as well. We appreciate any of their advice that they offer. So to review, we find rattlesnakes, we complete the cards, and I'll show you a little bit about that. We take pictures, move on to the next one as the team goes through and finds rattlesnakes. So this is a rattlesnake card. Uh, you can see that uh, we fill the date out. Um, then we actually have a card number four, and we'll put four um, also down here on the bottom of the card. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through this just a second. And then when we have the four, the four is actually at the bottom, so that way when they cut it, then they can tag the, this piece onto the rattlesnake, and then when they put this on the wall, they'll actually have a picture of the, uh, the rattlesnake next to this part of it. So you can actually correspond number four as actually a, that tag is on the rattlesnake, this tag is on the wall. So we've actually explained what it is. Is it a safety? Is it a quality? Is it a 5S uh, rattlesnake? So we talk about finding them, writing them up, cutting off the bottom portion of the card, tape it to the rattlesnake, write the card number. Um, one, of, one of the things that we found is you get the uh, little six inch dry erase boards and write the four large on the dry erase board. Make sure that's in the picture because we found that doing these, we print out a hundred pictures and then we're having to take a lot of time to figure out which picture corresponds to which card. So we give each team a small dry erase board so that they can write the number on the board on the dry erase board and have that in the picture so you can see which picture corresponds with which card. Uh, so then you take the photo and then go to uh, find the next rattlesnake. You print it out, you unload the camera, print out all the photos, usually four per 11, uh, 8 by 11. So I would have four pictures, that's about the size you need to do of the pic four pictures per page. I cut into individual and tape it to the wall. Uh, I tape the card to the immediate right of the photo. And then you're going to leave space so you can put the after picture on the other side of the card. So again, this is an example. This is a rattlesnake. Uh, holder needs cleaning. And so then we have space here uh, to put the after picture. So also, this is the whiteboard I'm talking about. So you have a 12, so I can find that card easily. So we put a little whiteboard in the picture with the number, and it makes it so much easier to uh, sort out the cards. Um, if it's a big safety issue, uh, at Neptune, where this, a lot of these pictures were taken, Net, Neptune, Tallahassee, Alabama, they make water meters, 500,000 square foot plant with a boundary. And they actually uh, have a find it, fix it program where they write up safety suggestions as well as part of the rattlesnake. So they have the examples of unsafe acts, examples of unsafe conditions. This is what your wall will look like once you kill a lot of them. So you can easily see which ones are not killed is the ones that don't have pictures. And each team, you know, we have a team picture usually up here, and it shows them, you know, where they're killing the rattlesnakes. How do you get started? Pick a starting point. The way they're doing it now is they're taking the three steps um, at Neptune and, and starting from the alleyway, walking three steps, doing rattlesnakes, walking another three steps, uh, taking pictures of rattlesnakes all the way to the end of their area. I talk about parade route is the actual route that the customer tours the department. So 
that's where I would start because that's you know you want to continue to model an area and then expand that on out and take three steps. Use the eyes of the customer's philosophy. What would a customer see? Um, and then take another three steps. That kind of gives you a good, uh, you know, some ideas, hopefully, on doing rattlesnake hunts. I love doing rattlesnake hunts. I've never had a situation. We've done it at Specialty Minerals in Montana, uh, Adams Mineral, Adams, Massachusetts, uh, Talc Mine. We've done it in the R&D Center, Office Center of uh, Neptune. Uh, what they're doing one every month now in the operations plant. So you can do it in offices as well as in uh, hospitals or any way you want. Look for those rattlesnakes and have a lot of fun. The reason I call it a rattlesnake is, you know, instead of an alligator or something like that, is because sometimes you'll hear an air leak. Well, that's kind of the rattle of the rattlesnake. Or you'll hear, or you hear a bearing going out in a machine. So a rattlesnake fits that. It's something that's really going to bite you if you don't, if you don't kill it. I'd uh, love to help you with the first one. I, I train the trainer. I, I don't come in and uh, I have a lot of other workshops that I can help you with, but with the rattlesnake hunts, they're so fun and easy. I like to train somebody to do them, and they run with it. And uh, I can help you anyway. I'm an open book. The thing about Association Manufacturing Excellence, AME, it's about sharing and helping companies all over the place uh, to really improve. And that, that's really been my family over the years for, for 20 something years with AMP. Um, so that's the contact information. Um, Scott, did you want to talk about this? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Mark. And uh, to our attendees, we've got about 1251 our time, so we're going to take the last uh, 10 minutes or so and take questions. Uh, I'm going to share just a few details around this lean boot camp that we're facilitating. And while I do so, feel free to, to send in any questions and we'll tackle that with uh, this last segment here. But uh, on, on March 11th in Atlanta, we're pleased uh, to be working with uh, with Mark to facilitate a lean boot camp. This is going to be a very practical, engaging live uh, workshop session. Uh, we're going to be tackling a wide variety of lean tools uh, from value stream mapping, 5S, visual management, standard work, and uh, of course, uh, if you have problems, which some of you may not, and, and you're, if you do though, you're typically always looking for better ways and techniques to solve those problems. And, and Lean can play a big part in that. So um, when you think of a, a Lean 101 type of, of session, this is what Lean Boot Camp's gonna be. It's gonna be a great introductory for someone brand new to Lean. Uh, and it's also going to be a great formal refresher for folks that have been around it before and, and just want to plug back in with a, a day of professional development. So, uh, again, Mark's going to be leading it uh, 8 to 4 on March 11th. Um, we're offering discounts to APIX and GMA. Uh, we've got the link here. And if you have any questions around Lean Boot Camp or today's webinar or, or any, anything, anything we can do to help, feel free to reach out back to me or uh, to Mark. And we're, we're going to be sending this, this deck along. Uh, shortly after the, the webinar session today. Okay, so with that said, we do have one question submitted. Uh, Mark, this question comes from Ben. Uh, what, are, what are some of the biggest, most impactful rattlesnakes that you found? Um, one of the biggest was a uh, in the plant, there was a chain link fence that was padlocked. And it was a fire exit. That was a huge rattlesnake. I mean, if, if, if OSHA were to find that, it would have been a big, big problem. A lot of the bigger ones are safety issues that we found. Uh, we also found where computers were packed full of dust and it was about to shut the machine down because there was no filtration uh, coming into the, the air of the, of the computer itself. Um, They've been, as far as quality goes, we found mixed labels. We found uh, a lot of things like uh, mixed defects in the good parts. Uh, so it's amazing what you can't find. A lot of it, you know, a good bit of its aesthetics uh, is uh, how you would see it as a, as a customer. But you'll be surprised. I, I usually get out of the 300 rattlesnakes, we usually get at least 70 safety issues. 
so it's an awesome safety audit as well. And, um, you know, from mislabeled OSHA um, chemical bottles to chemicals on top of the equipment that could cause the equipment to be fried. But the biggest one I'd say so far is the uh, chain link fence that was padlocked and it was fired. Good. Great. Another question comes from Michael, uh, Mark. Uh, how tough is it to get team members engaged that are part of the lean rattlesnake hunt? Um, once they find out what it's about, you know, it, it, the first one is harder because you don't know what this change is all about, what this is about. But uh, once they they see, I did a two-hour training cut, some, and some of it was what we went over today, uh, but also um, getting them energized around taking care of problems that they've been wanting to fix forever and seeing that there's a difference in the approach. I've had no problems. The next the next rattlesnake you have after that, people are like wanting to be on the team just because they see what an advantage it is. So so Mark, uh this next question comes from a separate Michael. Uh, how do you keep focus on key items and not trivial findings? Um, well, I, I want both in a way because lean is about step-by-step -step improvement and the big items will come. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong because I, I kind of like having the uh, awards as what's the biggest safety issue you can find, what's the biggest quality issue you can find. And that gives them a little bit of uh, competitive leverage to try to find some big ones as well. But I don't mind them finding some small ones because every little bit helps. And um, by uncovering some of the small ones, you, you can really find some, some big ones as well. Mark, uh, one uh, follow-up question to that. Part of the lean rattlesnake hunt is really getting employees to uh, learn how to see waste. So w would you consider the small ones that you might catch to be effective in, in helping uh, train them on that mindset? Yeah, that's the, that's the whole key is learning to see waste. That's why it's really uh, one of the first things that I would suggest if you're going to do a lean journey is do a rattlesnake hunt because you learn what the wastes are and you start learning to see what those wastes are in your environment. And uh, I definitely, it's, a, it's about learning to see. Terrific. Okay, well that brings us, uh, our webinar to a close. I uh, want to thank all of our attendees for joining us. Again, we'll be sending out the PDF presentation and the recording of today's session uh, shortly uh, this afternoon. And secondly, Mark, thanks for your time. Uh, as y'all can see, he is on site today, <laughs> dialed in from a plant. So I uh, appreciate you taking uh, an hour or so of your time today, Mark, and, and sharing your, your perspective and best practices with our attendees. Mark, any last words? No, I love, uh, I'm passionate about it. I know it works. I've been in so many plants where it works. So, uh, you know, I encourage you to do whatever you can to really engage the employees. Again, lean is about living it, engaging employees, having the right attitude, getting that right cultural attitude, and doing something about it now. And the rattlesnake hunt seems to be a really fun way to do that. Terrific. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon, and we look forward to connecting with you soon. Thank you.